humans write so romance but it's not uh, just uh, romance so it's one uh, half factor special effect this is one right <laughs> <laughs> uh, long and short or short uh, well it is long so, so uh, but not excessively long so say 0.8 and then what else can it be? Is it a comedy? No. <laughs> they are all that serious there. Um, and it's kind of reasonable to expect that 300 items should be enough to describe any movie. Now, what are the items? Well, that's hard to find, right? Probably different people will find different attributes. Right now, that's so here. This table, if we did it for all the movies, would be the number of movies. So this would be um, one half times ten to the six, right? Uh, and here would be only three hundred. So this would be a very tall, but very narrow compared to the vertical size, a very narrow matrix. Okay. Now, for each user, you can also consider exactly the same uh, attributes, uh, right? Action, romance, uh, and then a special effect and so forth. Now, uh, for each of the, so this would be now about, again, 300. Uh, okay. Uh, how about we do it uh, so that we don't have to transpose uh, Instead of doing it this way, we will put user here, and uh, uh, here we will put categories. Uh, so this would be action, uh, then it would be, uh, and here will be users, right? User one, user and so forth, and here is action, uh, then romance, uh, then uh, special effect, and uh, so forth. So what would be the size of this matrix? Well, this dimension now is about 300. And uh, no, uh, no, movies were not half a million. That's a, a little bit of exaggeration. This was about uh, uh, 17,000. Huh? But here, the number of users. No, wait a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but the users there, this was uh, uh, half a million. Huh? <laughs> Uh, so now, what would you put here? Say so here, user number one is me, myself, and user number two is my wife. So action movie, I give it 0.9, my wife gives it 0.1. Romance, I put 0.1, my wife gives it 0.9. <laughs> Special effect, I give it one, my wife gives it zero. <laughs> right? Then long and short, uh, I'm impatient, so if it's movie is long, I don't like it very much, point 25. My wife being stingy, she paid the ticket, so she likes long movies, point 75. Right? Now, it is reasonable to expect 
that if you normalize it properly, then how much I would love a movie is simply a product, dot product of this vector with this vector. Why? Because this movie has action of point 0.9, lots of action, and I like a lot movies with lots of action, so the product will be large, right? Uh, the movie also has 0.5 romance, but I don't like very much romantic movies, so the product 0.5 times 0.1 will be small. So this tells you of each attribute, uh, how much of that attribute the particular movie has. And this tells you how important each of these attribute is to me. So when I multiply this by that, this value, if we properly normalize it, <coughs> should reflect how much I am going to like the movie. Right? And now notice <coughs> that uh, this is a, uh, a uh, tall narrow matrix and this is a long short matrix, right? Their product will be gigantic because the dimension of the product is total number of movies times total number of users, exactly what we have in our table. Okay, now the million dollar question. Who can find the 300 attributes? Who, who is really qualified to sort the movies according to 300 categories, right? Mm -hmm. And secondly, who is going to mark to, to evaluate all of the movies and who is going to ask all of these users what they think about 300 categories. So obviously this is not a very feasible project and this is where math comes into the play. As I told you many times, the value of math is that it allows you to do things that you don't understand. <laughs> but you rely on formulas, right? So what do you do? You have a partially filled matrix here, right? Then you simply put variables in all of these <coughs> spaces and you put variables in all of these spaces. Now, the total number of variables will be 300 times 17,000 and half a million times 300, but that's small compared to the number of data points. Because here we have half a million by 18,000 about 1% field, and this is much larger than the number of variables. So what you do is you simply, quote unquote simply, we will talk about <laughs> that, uh, you put everywhere a known axis here, a known y <laughs> here, and then you, uh, so let's call the first matrix capital X times capital Y, so in X are all X's as variables. In Y's are just all Y's as variables. And then this you subtract on the positions that you have uh, your matrix of preferences, M, and you find the L2 norm of this or what's called Frobenius norm, you simply find the square, you find simply sum of uh, uh, x times y. Um, okay, so you find the following. Uh, 
you find uh, uh, the row. Uh, so uh, how shall we denote this? The row of okay, the row of x times i row of okay. So um, let's call this. Uh, so the variable will be because it's row i, it will be i j times because it's column will be y. Uh, so it will be uh, white uh, column. So times uh, let me not make a mistake. So it's i uh, row times uh, uh, column. J, wait a second, uh, a row I, so this will be say I, K, and then column, so this will be K, column J, right, and then sum over K um, minus uh, the value in the table at i at i j and then squared um, over all and you sum it over all over all ij's for which there is a value in the table. Right? So over ij such that uh, m i j exists. Right? And you solve this of the minimization problem. So essentially what you are doing uh, is you are putting variables x here. You are putting variables y here. You find the product of these matrices. What will be the product? Well, each product will be i row times j column will produce the value that in, should go in the position ij. Right? Now, you, you find for all places where you have value, you find what is the difference between this matrix product at that value squared, and you try to minimize it. So this is why it's called positive matrix decomposition. You have a partially filled matrix. You are looking for a narrow long matrix and a tall narrow matrix so that when you multiply these two matrices right on the places on which you do have data you get as close as possible now notice you absolutely don't you don't have a interpretation for what is this 300 so here you will have you write, uh, some kind of categories, but you, you don't know what they are. They come by from math, by trying to minimize whatever they are, the, whatever they might be. This is why they are called the latent variables. You cannot observe that you don't know what they are, but you simply solve a mathematical optimization problem. Find two matrices, right? One of which, find two matrices, one of which is uh, small in one dimension and the other small in the other direction. So, when I draw the picture, It will be clear. So the idea is you are looking for um, uh, 
start to see in what the direction I so we are looking for a tall matrix like this that is of size of 17,000 for math ways, right? Times, and this is a design parameter you decide you fix it to 300. And then another matrix that is extremely long because it has uh, 500 thousand users, no, 500,000, I'm now being over there. Okay, right? And this is 300. You put variables, you fill this with variables, and you fill this with variables Y. You find the product, and the product will be a gigantic matrix. And then you put the requirement uh, that in, in values of the product, uh, right, this will be a uh, certain row here with certain column here. So this is i row here, j column here, right? Then here, i, j, you will have a sum that looks like this, x, i, k times y, k, j, and this, so this is, this is just product of variables. And you force this, that the difference between that and the value of the matrix of rankings that users gave you, so this is also i and j, that the difference between, so this is ranking, say, m, i, j. That the difference between this and m, i, j, when you square it to eliminate the sign, sum of all of these over all data points where you have this guy to be as small as possible. And once you solve, then you simply use the other points that uh, uh, for these found uh, values of x and y uh, that minimize this, then you, you, this is a full matrix now, it's completely filled with numbers. And these numbers are the numbers that give you the prediction. And it works remarkably well, it works better even than um, than the neighborhood method, but um, the final winner, as I say, was actually a weighted combination of ranks produced this way and ranks produced by neighborhood method and several versions of these. Now, what is the problem now here? The problem here is that this is no longer a quadratic function. This is a function of order four, right? Because you have quadratic, you have product of two variables and then squared, so that's degree in total four. And worse, this is not even what's called a convex uh, function. Right, and if you differentiate this, you will get uh, an expression of all degree three, and you have to set it equal to zero, and you have to solve a gigantic system of cubic equations. Forget it. So what do people do? People do the following brilliant tricks. Trick. First, what you do, <coughs> you populate x with a random numbers, say. Or you can even put ones everywhere, but the best is if you populate with the random numbers. Then you put here a variables, and you do solve. So you see, now x's will become constants. And you have only y as a variable, so this is just a regular 
least square feet. You solve for y, right? So you have the values for y for your random choice here. Now you take thus obtained values for y here, and you put variables here, right? Now what's going to happen, y will become constants, and x are variables, and lo and behold, this is a least square fit of quadratic, so easily solvable. And you keep flip-flopping what's variable, what's constant, until numbers stabilize. So do you understand the trick? Right? So you, it's hard to solve this minimization problem when both x and y are variables. So you start with a random guess here. You put y's and you find y so that the product of x, y minimizes this difference. This gives you some solution for the y's. You take this solution and now you put variables here. You solve these squares and you get some numbers here, which you now take and put again variables here and you keep alternating between the two sides until the computation stabilizes uh, and lo and behold uh, this gives you uh, now there is there was after this method of latent variables was proposed a good deal of computer scientists declare they don't like it. <laughs> because, okay, you got some numbers here, but what do they mean? What are the qualities? If you don't understand your prediction system, what, uh, what's its value? Well, its value is... Uh, who cares that you don't understand? What they are? <laughs> if they give the right prediction, right? Now you might think that's <coughs> bizarre, but uh, let me tell you, this is how the entire quantum mechanics operates. In the following sense, you see, I have to believe that light is simultaneously a stream of particles and a wave. How can something be either it's a little little lumps coming towards me from there or it's a wave? How can it be simultaneously both? Well, guess what? <coughs> you set up equations for particles, you set up equations for waves, and they both work fine when you use them to predict the results of experiments. Now, what how can it be? that something is a, simultaneously a wave and a particle, well, that's your problem because you are too dumb, <laughs> so to speak. Humans have evolved with only microscopic sense, but math allows them, or for example, gravity. What's the nature of gravity? You see, if I take this and I let it go, boom, it goes down. And I have told by relativity theory that that's because the space is curved. So just it looks like this, uh, essentially, right? But with Riemannian curvature, and uh, simply the big mass uh, Earth uh, curves the space so that this poor eraser simply follows the geodesic line, right? I don't see any curvature around here, <laughs> right? But lo and behold, uh, it produces. No one has been able to falsify relativity theory or quantum mechanics. And if you ask any honest physicist, and you know you have famous people on the web, and they all openly agree that they don't have the slightest clue what quantum mechanics really in, and there are philosoph philosophies, and it's called, was it Copenhagen interpretation? Um, uh, that there are <coughs> of quantum mechanics, and you know also, you know the, for, for example, when the electrons go around the nucleus, well, it's not really little balls that 
go around, it's that you have probabilities uh, that the electron is a certain place at certain point. And Einstein was very unhappy about that, and then he said that, uh, you know, God doesn't throw dice and things like that, because, uh, <coughs> not to mention the Schrodinger cat and so forth. So what I'm trying to say, uh, uh, humans have limited cognitive abilities, but they can do calculations. The measurement of success of a method is not how much you understand what the method does. It, this is just an added bonus to just make you happy. But the, the, the measurement is of how good job it does in practice. And lo and behold, uh, these, uh, so to speak, latent variables, even though I don't know when the first one is, how romantic the movie is and uh, all that, but somehow they emerge from the process of the modeling. And uh, in practice, they produce excellent results and help people like Netflix make a lot of money, right? And since we all like money, we don't care too much that we have no clue what these 300 uh, uh, quantities, uh, uh, of what they represent, for as long as there is a dollar sign in front of it, we are all happy, right? <laughs> okay, so as I said, <coughs> now for the Netflix and even for recommender systems um, for other purposes, right? You can take ranks obtained, so say raw obtained by the neighborhood method, and you can take raw obtained by latent variables method, and then you take uh, W uh, times uh, raw N plus one minus W times raw L. And you call this some kind of composite rank. How big should be W? Well, to determine W, you simply make trial and error by, again, taking out parts of your matrix, running your <coughs> prediction algorithm to fill it, to find what it should be here, even though you know what it is, but you block it out. And then you choose W to get as close as possible always changing the, uh, the test set so that you don't fit your model to a particular subset. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, the error, both systems achieved RMS error of 0 0.89, which is less, on average, less than one star error, right? Uh, in, uh, in movie ranking. And amazingly enough, the two algorithms achieved the same accuracy to, I think, four decimal places, uh, right? But one of them was submitted earlier and won a million uh, dollars. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, uh, you know, and there were lots of contenders that came very, very close to this number. And uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, is there some kind of <laughs> information theoretic limit to, as to what you can predict? Um, uh, because it's kind of really, really strange that uh, maybe it's some kind of grammar row bound for recommender systems. Uh, Anyhow, now you have a pretty good idea about the basic ingredients and what people now do. They combine the two methods uh, to, um, to produce even better fit. You know, this is not so unusual. For example, face recognition system on your cameras uh, are built out of extraordinarily crude classification algorithms. Like, for example, is uh, uh, 
the block reasonably symmetric left and right. Uh, well, that's not a phase, right? But they could, then they use boosting, they kind of combine, uh, I think, thousands of simple criteria and uh, I'm really amazed how accurately actually works on cameras. Uh, so this idea of cooking up uh, lots of lots of uh, uh, simpler algorithms into uh, a more complex algorithm actually works remarkably well, even though it might look kind of pretty ugly because it's not really based on some deep theory of uh, what kind of feature human human face uh, should have. Uh, okay, so I think it's a good place to stop because uh, we have to start a new uh, topic. So the midterm will be week seven on Wednesday for those of you that uh, um, the want to take the midterm, and as I say, I was just persuaded to let you take the midterm and to do the project, and then I'll take max of the two. So, uh, but don't ask me any other things, I'm already in trouble with fiddling with the rules. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes, we've been holding it for the entire lecture, but that's just 10 to the power of negative 6. Sorry? Ten to the power negative six on the board. Ten to the power negative six on the. Yeah, that's half a million. Yeah, but negative six. Sorry. Oh, yeah, okay. sure. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's because what I do is signal processing. It's always uh, ten to the minus six. Yeah. So. That, uh, well, uh, this is the population of America. So. <laughs> <laughs>